Welcome to another episode of Dr. Simone Says. My name is Simone Eastman Yuan. I am a medical doctor with sickle cell disorder. I am also the best-selling author of the books All Rise, The Sickle Cell Community vs. the Medical Establishment, and A Doctor in a Patient's Body, Dreaming Big with Sickle Cell Disease and Chronic Pain. These days, I like to spend my time making sure that every sickle cell survivor becomes a sickle cell thriver because it matters that we live well. Hi guys, this is Dr. Simone here. I hope you guys are doing well. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that I accidentally discovered that has been a world of relief to me. And I tell you, sometimes when things happen like that, I stop and think, you know, this probably could have been discovered a long time ago if there were other doctors that uh, had sickle cell and were desperately trying to relieve their pain, right? I mean, that's how things get discovered. Um, I have sickle cell. I'm a medical doctor. So put those two together. I was laying one night and I couldn't fall asleep because usually my pain uh, that I have with sickling tends to start, if it's not in my chest, it's in my legs. It's a legs and so I couldn't sleep because my legs were throbbing it out my gosh I hope it doesn't get too crazy because it tends to start in the legs and then move you know elsewhere and I thought what could I do like you know my husband usually gets up and squeezes them for me and I thought he has to go to work early in the morning I I know he would get up and do it he's done it umpteen times but is there something else I could do that could mimic that massage that he does? And then I thought about it. My blood pressure cuff. Now, this is not typical, right? Normally, we take the blood pressure cuff and we put it around our arm and we do, we take our blood pressures. But think about what it's doing. Think about the blood in your arm. It is displacing that blood with a force because it actually just cranked up the force uh, in your in your blood vessels by putting applying pressure in that insufflator on the outside, right? So, and that pressure is then uh, transferred across your vessels. Now, it dislodges things, and if our sickling is if the, if the cells are clustered just a little bit together or on the walls and is just a little sticky but it hasn't actually formed a clot or anything like that and there isn't like obvious swelling but just a pain, you can actually take that same insufflator, right, and put it on your arm and do like you're taking your blood pressure and with that displacement of of um of blood it would be enough pressure to kind of just uh it could just displace it it would be just enough pressure to displace that sticky cell that might be wanting to start occluding that vessel usually it's the smaller vessels that that can happen right if you have a big vessel, it will just stick along the wall and make it maybe a little narrower, but it wouldn't occlude it. It wouldn't completely block it. If it's a smaller vessel, like a capillary or or um, or a venule, right, uh, then it can actually block the vessel and cause pain when you're sickly. So you could take the same, apply the same procedure and wrap that blood pressure cuff around your sore spot and don't worry about the gauge just squeeze the insufflator that little ball and apply some pressure enough that you can tolerate hold it maybe for 10 seconds and release and the pain would be gone because it, it was enough to just kind of jolt the cells around and br break them apart and so I got up and that's exactly what I did. So normally we would do it on our arm, but you could do it on your forearm and you could do it on your leg as long as that, um, as long as it can wrap around, you know, the, um, 
leg and there are different sizes of of blood pressure cuffs so you might need a um, a larger cuff if you're a, you know if you're a bigger person or if you're using it let's say you wanted to put it more like uh, on your uh, lower thigh or um, right below your knee and you're a bigger person you might need a bigger cuff but most most people are going to be okay with a medium-sized cuff anywhere up and down the leg so my pain is usually right below my knee right on my t uh, right tibia and uh, it goes all the way uh, down to my foot and so I got up and I put the um, blood pressure cuff around my calf and there was no obvious there wasn't any swelling or anything so I put it around my calf and I squeezed um, you know just kind of uh, uh, use the insufflator to pump the the cuff like I'm taking a blood pressure held it for like 10 seconds and then released it and I did the same thing to my leg and I will take a video uh, as I do it just to show you what it looks like and really if it's your blood pressure cuff you can feel free to use it on any extremity I would just say just keep it to extremities I know you have pain in other areas but it's not made for other areas and so so be cautious with it please talk to your doctor about it because I want to make sure that you're not doing anything that is harmful to yourself however I know that oftentimes you know you'll go in your nurse will take your blood pressure no problem even if your arm was a little swollen they still take the blood pressure I have been in the hospital where um, they have taken my blood pressure in my legs and um, my legs weren't swollen but they took the pressure in my leg while I was in crisis nothing happened to me right so uh, I hope that this is helpful because you know when I think about it nobody in medicine would really be in a, the position to be desperate enough to try something like this but I have sickle cell and so it makes me think differently and it makes me think about you guys because I want whatever I think about for myself I want to be able to share with you guys to get a little bit of relief as well hope this was helpful okay guys so I know you can't see my face but I wanted you to be able to see exactly what I was talking about so first you get out your uh, blood pressure your blood pressure machine your blood pressure cuff okay and it is better for it to be the manual um, kind um, because you can control the pressures better um, and so this is what I did I basically um, and don't forget I said speak with your doctor you don't want to do this if one leg is more swollen than the other because that can implicate that you are having a clot situation and the last thing you want to do is to pump that clot and dislodge it because that is what causes a pulmonary embolism and you can die however when people are doing blood pressures on you every day they're not thinking about that and I have actually had nurses do blood pressure measurements on my legs while I was in the hospital for whatever reason if a, an IV was in my arm or something was happening where my arm was not available and they have done it on my leg I'm sure they noticed that I didn't have any obvious swelling in the leg and so they felt like it was okay to go ahead and do so so again if you have asymmetric swelling in your leg where there's one leg swollen and the other not you don't want to do this because you want to make sure that uh, you talk with your doctor and find out if there's a clot that's causing that and you should probably run this by your doctor like I said in general okay so I wrap this around my leg this is the leg that was paining me this is usually the leg that's where I start um, having a, 
a sickle cell crisis. You don't need this gauge really because you're gonna just judge it based on how um, tight it feels and you're gonna start pressing and you can see it starting to inflate, okay? So this is the insufflator and it starts to inflate and then you will feel that it gets to a point where it's tight enough where you feel like, oh my gosh, it's too tight. And you hold that, you just count for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna stop at seven and open it. I stopped at seven because I had it on for a good three seconds before I started counting. Um, and so, uh, and then you let it go. Now this is no hard science, I'm just saying, count to 10 and probably no more because you don't want to uh, keep it on for that long. So what's happening when I'm doing this? What's happening is it is going to squeeze all of the vessel. When it does that, whatever little sickling might be in any region is also going to be disturbed. Right? And so that suddenly because of the pressure that that's in the vessel because you put pressure on a certain point of the vessel that's going to displace everything and it's going to uh, send pressure to to that part as well and you're going to have a sudden relief because suddenly whatever vessel uh was getting close to being occluded or or blocked or sludged by sickle cells was now relieved and so it can continue to circulate without uh, any problems and you will feel if you were having a lot of pain in the leg you suddenly feel like this relief like oh, a lot of times I can't sleep because it's throbbing in my legs and recently when I when I thought of this and started doing this oh my gosh it's like magic it just suddenly calms down um, and it calms down and just eases up and you get such relief and you can do it on any part so for example I put on some socks because I wanted to show you you could do it even on this part of your leg so it's just a matter of trying to get everything wrapped up around the leg okay and then once it's wrapped again And it gets to a point where it's like, oh my gosh, that's really tight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not a hard science. And then I open it. And so whatever was going on here, whatever difficulty circulating uh, was just relieved and I can do that a couple times. I'll rest it in between I'd say give it a good 10 minutes to rest if you wanted to try it again Kind of like the way they do with your blood pressure if they measure it and they think that it's a little high And they say okay sit and wait for a couple minutes and then we'll recheck again. You can do that, right? and so this relieves the pain in your leg it's amazing it's simple but effective and so I wanted to show you guys that because this is not something that doctors would typically do this was out of desperation one night like I said and voila we have a temporary solution so try this at home and please come back to the video and comment and let me know how it went and what you thought of the results because in a way we're kind of trying it out together to see if it's you know if it's helpful enough that we should talk you know that we should make a bigger talk about it all right thanks for watching and I will talk with you soon take good care until next time this is dr. Simone says and remember you are a sickle cell thriver and not just a survivor if you benefited from this episode any at all, please like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with one other person as your good deed towards the sickle cell cause. 
Have a great day. If you would like to contact me to speak in your area, please don't hesitate to email me at drsimonesays at gmail.com. If you are the one referring me, please let me know so that I could send you a nice thank you surprise.